Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable uh, coming back at you again with more content. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the process of ovalization. Uh, we have our Category 6 slash 6A plug, and we have a Category 6A riser cable here and a Category 6 riser cable. And as you can tell, there is a significant difference in thickness between them. So some cables do need to be ovalized when you're, uh, in order to get it to fit in the back of the plug. And there's been some, uh, some, I guess, some controversy and contention online about whether you should ovalize uh, Ethernet cable or not. And we're going to prove to you uh, that, in fact, yes, not only do you have to do it sometimes because of cable thickness, because RJ45s are limited in regards to exterior dimensions, but also that it does not, in fact, damage your cable. Uh, and I'm gonna prove it with a DSX-8000, which we'll uh, have a little test at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and buckle up and I'm gonna show you the ovalization technique and then we're gonna do our test. Okay, so we've got uh, both cables that are ready to be uh, terminated with RJ45s. This is the Category 6 riser and this is the Category 6A riser. As you can see, there is a significant difference, especially when you line them up like that. So the Category 6 riser, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, it doesn't require ovalization. So you just simply slide the cable jacket inward and stop at at least this ledge right here. And I'll point that out with some clippers. There is a ledge that is a steep drop off after the strain latch. And that is where the cable jacket absolutely has to end up. Now you can certainly go further up if you wish. It helps to uh, increase headroom on the cable. Sometimes, sometimes not, depends on a lot of factors. But at least to there, that gives you the half inch maximum on twist that you're allowed to have. And very straightforward. Uh, there was no need to ovalize the cable jacket. Now, when it comes to category 6A, uh, there is a need to ovalize because what you're, what you're going to notice is, is that as soon as you get the plug uh, to the cable jacket, it's not going to go on very easily. So you're going to need to make it a little bit easier on yourself. And the way you do that is simply a pair of Lyman's electrical pliers. Now, uh, you can pick these up at Harbor Freight. You don't need to spend a lot of money on them. Uh, this is a six inch set here. And uh, what I use is the oval cutout near the nose. I don't use the flat part. I don't use the cutter part. I use the oval cutout. The idea being to shape the end of the cable gently to match the rectangular cutout in the back of the plug. So I'll demonstrate that right now. So you're going to shape it in line with the plug, like so. And the last half inch is more than sufficient to ovalize. And don't go smashing it flat. All you're doing is looking to gently reshape it. And that's all that you want to do so that you make this process easy. And then before it springs back into shape on you, because it will, it'll spring back to a circle real quick, start pushing this guy in there and there it goes. Get it in there at least to the past the ledge and we've got it. So that's how you ovalize category 6A or just in general thick ethernet cable to fit into a plug where it's designed to fit, it's just that it needs to be ovalized to go first. Now, some people will say, well, you should be using oversized plugs. Well, what exactly does that mean? Um, the standard for RJ45s is very, is 8P8C actually is the real uh, standard, uh, is very defined. Uh, you can be a certain length, you can be a certain height, and you can be a certain width. So that this fits into any standard RJ45 port. Uh, it has to have eight positions and eight contacts. It has to have a strain latch or some other attachment mechanism to make sure that the cable can't pull out from the plug. But as far as the inside is concerned, you can only make plastic so thin and have it still work. So uh, there, is a, there is an upper limit to uh, exactly what an RJ45 plug will be able to accept. And then it simply uh, can't accept uh, cabling uh, at all anymore. I mean, there, there's, once you get above 6.8 to 6.9 millimeter cable jacket diameter, and this happens to be 7.3, uh, you're going to pretty well need to ovalize. So it doesn't matter what plug you're using. It doesn't matter what cable you're using. It's just that RJ45s, you've only got so much space to work with on the outside. And unless this is made out of armored plastic of some kind, which doesn't, well, I guess it exists, but not in the world of Ethernet, um, 
you know, your plastic has to be a certain thickness in order to be durable at all. Otherwise, it'll simply break. So ovalization is necessary in some cases, and I just showed you a case where it is. However, I did promise you a test and to prove to the naysayers out there that this, in fact, does not harm your termination or your cable at all. So we're going to do a really tough test, and here it goes. Okay, so we're going to do the Fluke DSX 8000 test. Um, for those of you uh, that are familiar with this equipment, uh, it is a, uh, a test set, relatively expensive one. And I'm going to be running a category six uh, patch cord test, two and a half meter, because this cable is about five feet long. Uh, these are patch cord adapters. They are not channel adapters. So it will measure the crosstalk uh, and return loss at the connector as well as at the cable. So if there was any damage caused by ovalization or by, um, or any impairment of performance, uh, we're gonna know uh, because this, this patch cord adapter is <clears throat> and the patch cord test is a very tight test. So uh, we'll go ahead and plug it in and see what happens here. All right, so that beep meant that it recognized that I plugged in the cable and now we're gonna actually run the test. And it passed. So uh, that is a pretty darn tough test. And so now we know that uh, the ovalization that I had to do to put these plugs on, uh, on both ends, as a matter of fact, did not impair performance, <clears throat> did not damage the cable or cause any issues, which has been honestly my experience up till now anyway. Um, the only time you may have a problem with ovalization is if you smash the cable flat in the process, you know, basically doing it improperly. Otherwise, uh, there is no danger and uh, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew it. So anyway, um, please leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Please leave a comment in the section below. Uh, we are very good about responding to comments. And with that, I will say, please subscribe to our channel. Have a great day and happy networking.